So the Threadripper build is complete. The 3960X 24 core 48 thread beast is in the machine. So of course, there's a montage. Let's get into it. So, for the most part, the build's gone pretty well, I think. There were a couple of relatively minor leaks, nothing to get too, uh, too excited about. And we've now got glass tubing in the bottom as well as in the top. Increasingly, I'm finding that easier and easier to work with. It is more work than the PETG um, or acrylic, but... <sighs> Actually, when you get the scoring and the breaking and you get yourself a clean cut, it's not substantially more amounts of work. You get yourself a nice smooth clean cut and you can just get away with a bit of wet and dry sanding on 800 grit paper. Uh, really not that bad at all. Um, I've, I'm really impressed with the Zenith 2 Extreme. It's a great board, expensive as hell. Uh, but worth the price, I think, five NVMe drives, all of which that support PCIe Gen 4. That's fantastic. 
uh, heat sinks on the riser card that supports uh, the, the two NVMe drives that go in next to the RAM sticks. Better performance and better looks as well, actually. Um, the LED screen is color and actually looks fab when the system's powered down. Um, it's got quite a nice animation with the Zenith 2 uh, logo, really quite eye-catching when the system's uh, not on. Um, two water cooling pump headers with high amperage, so if you haven't got pumps that support connection straight into your power supply, you're gonna have no problems there. You've got flow monitors, sensor probes, and, 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 and you name it, it's got it. Um, the RAM um, went straight to 3600 megahertz. It wasn't on the uh, the qualified vendor list for the board, so I was really pleased to see that. And I did have a comment in one of my previous videos around someone had struggled to get that to 3600. I think they were running at 3200 megahertz, but with tighter timings. Um, so I was getting myself prepared and ready to send that back. 3600 megahertz is the sweet spot for the infinity fabric but it went straight to that with no fuss at all we did a bios update uh, with absolutely no problems at all and i have to say i just think in the round they've sorted all of the niggles that i had with first gen ryzen i had problems with the 1950x in actually getting the socket closed where you have to use the torque wrench to tighten down the three screws in a particular order. I had all orders of problems doing that with the, the first generation. None of that uh, visible here. Um, the NVMe uh, heat sinks were very difficult to remove on the original Zenith boards. I think they'd use some kind of Loctite uh, glue on the screws, which is just bonkers because those things were designed to be uh, removed. None of those problems here. And despite a 280 watt TDP, now it's not overclocked, but it is running cooler than the 1950X. I guess it's got uh, more recent thermal paste on there, but to be fair, I'm using the same water block, the same loop, the same radiators, the same fans. There's, there's, it doesn't make a lot of sense. It's not overclocked, so we'll, we'll wait and see what happens when we do that. And um, performance-wise, absolutely tearing through, <laughs> tearing through Premiere Pro. So much smoother in the timelines uh, whilst I'm editing. I normally wouldn't use color correction uh, or lots of the kind of swishy in and out, lower lower thirds uh, type information, but I can just plow all of that straight in even while I'm editing. It doesn't slow down, it doesn't stutter. And substantially faster loading on the videos thanks to the speed uplift from Generation 4 PCIe. Um, we haven't put an overclock on here yet, but we are already on the 3D Mark Hall of Fame for Time Spy Extreme for two GPU systems, which is, I think, a far more realistic uh, scenario that you'd expect to find a build in. We're absolutely going to do some really in-depth benchmarks, a proper review of the board uh, and CPU. Uh, and we are definitely going to be overclocking this thing, so expect a guide for that as well. So there we go, guys. The 3960X build in the original SMA A8 is done. The experimentation with the glass tubing has been a resounding success. So now we need to start planning the glass and ice-themed build in the SMA A8 Revision A with a distro plate. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss all of those fabulous videos coming up. Please like and share this video. And as always, I hope you're really well wherever in the world you are.